Hi guys, welcome to Wealth Hub Empire Show. This is the new look. And today we are just going to tackle getting to know Abby, the life of Abby, uh, what I've been through in my career, in my life, just general questions. Welcome. What was your first job? My first job was uh, at Uchumi Supermarkets, the famous Uchumi Supermarket. And I was at 19 years old when everybody else was going to uni. Uh, me, I started working at 19. In fact, yesterday God was reminding me that it's been 24 years of working in the corporate world because I wasn't counting those years before I joined college and stuff. But it's been uh, 24 years and my very first job was to train for markets as a cashier and I stayed there for two years. How did I get the job? My dad bought a newspaper. Uh, he knew at that particular time we wouldn't be able to get me to uni or college immediately. So he used to bring these classified uh, newspapers. We looked for jobs, we applied and wow, I got the job. <laughs> which I find so intriguing because it was so many. I remember that time at um, uh, this place in town called Aga Khan Walk. I think there were like a hundred of us and they just needed three cashiers. So we did the interview, they shortlisted 10 of us. My sister was there, my big sister. <laughs> I see that. And uh, I got it and she didn't and also my cousin. And that marked the beginning of my journey with money. I think me becoming a cashier is my first job is what now led to me thinking of doing finance. How much was your salary? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> my first salary actually was really good. That was in... Let me just mention the, the year 1998. Uh, about seven to 14,000 Kenya shillings. Why I say to 14 is because we used to have over 10. That job was rigorous. We would come even on Sundays, work overtime. I remember my hardest days in Uchunu was 24th of December, when tomorrow is Christmas. The queues would be from under can walk to almost bus station. Anyway, I'm exaggerating, but um, that was a tough job. But I learned a lot, and that is what now later made me think, now that I'm touching money, a lot of money, not my money, how can I study and make it my money? At the end of the first year, because I was the youngest at 19, I worked with people of 30 years, 35 years. Those days I used to hear someone is 30. I'm like, 30, where have you been and why are you here? And uh, the most me memorable moment when, when at the end of the year, they were awarding the fastest cashier, the most uh, diligent cashier or my Cash box used to just to balance all the time. I got the award. That was a shocker and a very memorable moment. I got a voucher. I think it was for 5,000 or 10,000. I can't remember. And I bought my mom gifts. Yes. What was your first experience with money? I was five, five years old. I was born in Nyeri and my dad used to work in Nairobi. So when he came one of the weekends, he gave me 20. Uh, Kenya shillings, a note was blue in color, I remember. And he told me, this is money. You hold on to it. If I stay so long in the city of Nairobi before coming home, you can buy something. And he gave me examples, rubbers, pencils, pens. But what did I do with the money? <laughs> do you want to know? Uh, of course, I bought sweets. And, uh, and, and all those kind of things. And when he came, he had to correct that. I think he was just testing me. But the first time I held a note, a denomination note, a medium of exchange, I think I was five, five or six, because I think I was in nursery school. And I bought a lot of sweets. I have never seen that amount of candy in my entire life. Because I think I probably must have gone to the shop and said, hi, sweets. And I gave the 20 shilling note and the person may have thought maybe I have a birthday or something. So it just packed all manner of sweets and biscuits. And I went home. I remember I ate them until my jaws were aching. So when my mom came and she, I told her where the sweets came from, she was like, you know what? 
I don't want to use the words she used, but you're not a very bright person, but she left it at that. And then when my dad came, he was told the story and we had a discussion. I didn't solve it, of course. What did you spend most on candy? And we shared with my friends, with my sisters, but the candy was not just ending. But at least I came into contact with what should we do with money? Because my dad, of course, was a bit surprised that I used all the money on um, candy. When did things start going wrong? Uh, I think now from that time, age five, all the way to um, uh, age nine, I was still in that school, a very good school somewhere in Nyeri. Then we transferred and we came to Nairobi where I got into a school somewhere in Kiambu County. And uh, I think to answer this question, when things began to go wrong is when now my dad did not have a job anymore. That was way later in life. Um, fasting forward, I went to that school, I joined high school, and then after high school is when all things began. We always had money in our family, and my dad would always give us pocket money, show us how to manage our money. Budgeting in our house was very, very, you know, an ordinary thing. Like we would do budgeting uh, together. My mom would bring her money. She was a businesswoman, and my dad was an accountant. And then at the end of the month, we would, they would do the planning together with us. Like we would be there seeing what, how they are planning the money. And I remember my dad would say, don't come to me for any money in the middle of the month. I will not be having any money. If you want anything, you tell me so that we budget for the following month. Anything in between, I'm not a businessman. And if you would know something and come and ask him for money, he'd be like, I thought I told you, what have you seen me sell? I'm not a business person. I don't have any money. So I think that continued until now when he didn't have a job anymore. And then now money became such a hard uh, commodity to come by. But then again, my, um, sorry, my mom was in business, so she stepped in most of the time. But the whole planning session that we used to sit as a family and plan, that one now was not there. I think that brought a bit of confusion in my head. How bad did it get? Well, this is, um, this is, this is, this is personal. This is a personal story to me. How bad it got, I remember as a teenager, uh, there was a time I couldn't afford the personal effects of a little girl. That was between 16 and 17. And I couldn't ask my parents because I knew they didn't have the money. So I remember that time was a very tough season for me because I uh, because when you go and meet with other girls, they have all these things, all this personal effects that you can't afford. That's how bad I, I remember it getting. And I desired to have a job so that I can be able to buy these things, like just normal personal uh, girl effects. Another additional question. Yeah. What did that teach you about money? Oh, I think the lesson that was coming out very clear at that time is in order to live a comfortable life, in order to afford everything that you need, you need money. Number two, money comes and goes. When it comes, you need to plan for an extended part, I mean, season, because you don't know when the next money is gonna come, especially around that time, because it's only my mom who had an income. So if we don't plan very well for this, we will not be able to afford these things around that time until another money comes. So, that made me realize that whenever you have money, you don't spend all of it. You buy what you need, you save the rest, and then another need will arise, and then life goes. So it, it, it gave me like a, like a pointer towards why planning your money is very, very important. Because if you don't do that, you will have this kind of an epileptic life, where today you're affording it, tomorrow you're not affording it, today you can buy a perfume, tomorrow you can't afford them. So you just... You don't have an identity, but when you plan your money, you can have all these effects, all these things that you need in, in a controlled manner, not like you overspend when you have it and then you lack when you don't have it. What are three words that you would tell first job Abby? I would tell little Abby, little Abby, little 19 year old Abby. It's never that serious. You don't have to be perfect. 
I think I was too serious from the get-go because of the occurrences that happened with my dad not having an income and all that kind of stuff. So even when I went to Uchumi, I never used to spend my money. I would save half of it. And then half of it or quarter of it, I would shop for my mom, my sisters, do all the necessary things. And then I don't remember doing anything for myself. So there was no that feeling of, I have worked hard. Now let me afford this for myself. It was all, I remember one time, this is very personal. My mom told me my bed was not having the right beddings, the right bed covers and stuff. Yet I was working in Uchumi earning a decent amount of money. Then she told me, you, you are where the money is. And this is how your bed looks. My mom had to actually tell me that yet I'm saving half of my income because I wanted to go to school. And then I'm buying everybody else around me because my sister was in high school that time I would shop for them, shop for my mom, shop for my auntie. And that was a lot of money. Like 14 minus 7 is um, 7K. So 7K maybe fair is a, a, a thousand. Shopping for my mom a thousand. I know that this sounds crazy. A thousand was a lot of money. I would shop and shop and shop and shop and shop and get pocket change. But what I would tell that little Abby, think about yourself first. You come first. What do you want in life? What makes you comfortable? This is what now I, I do right now, but if I knew better, I would have started doing that even from, because when you get your income, if it's 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, part of it is for saving, part of it is for giving, part of it is for you to enjoy, and part of it is, protection or whatever but you can't just have this life where you get all your money and then you save all of it then you will lose touch with the job you're doing because you're not enjoying the fruit of your labor because i think what god intended is for us to be able to work and then enjoy work and then enjoy what are the best decisions first job are being made of saving to go back to school well, after uh, Uchumi employed me, we were relocated to a branch that was near uh, main campus. So I would see people my age coming to buy books, drinks, and I would look at them and I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm too young to be going through what we're going through. And going through is like customers being rude, you being told to do a job like cleaning the toilets. That, it, that, that's not your designation. My work was being a cashier. So in my head, I, I, I started deciding as a little girl, I started parenting myself as a 19 year old girl. I don't have to be here for, for forever. Most of the people we were working with had loved the job so much because it had money, it had uh, overtime. But me, I was thinking ahead. I'm like, what if this company is not there tomorrow? What will happen if I continue not having credentials and my academic doesn't improve? If I lose this job, how will I get the other one? It was very really clear in my head. So the best decision I made is to work for two years, then resign, get to school. I did CPAs at that particular time. Of course, my, 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 we had a, a bit of a, a discussion with my dad where he was leaning towards uh, me probably staying in the job longer. But me, I was, my antennas were very really high. And long story short, Uchumi didn't last more than three years after I left. So whatever I was fearing would have befallen me. So that's the, the best decision I've made. Saving half of my income to go to college. Of course, later my dad helped me. His things had improved and he chipped in. But if I hadn't started the journey of going to do uh, CPAs, I would have probably, you know, been returned together with others when Uchumi went insolvent. So that's the best decision I made. Uh, and that is the end of the question. Mm -hmm.